the second part of uh, the coupled templates for the next generation. So this is part of our matrimonial healing week. And we thank God for what has been happening on this platform for the past few days. We trust God to bring out great results and great testimonies from these efforts in the name of Jesus. I'm glad you're joining us. And we're just going to take it from there and look at this same topic from where we stopped in the first section. Father, thank you for this privilege to teach your word. I ask that you grant us illumination in our hearts to see how you actually intend to raise children, to raise the next generation from our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. Grant us the grace to understand your concept and your principles that we may make a, a, a greater success uh, than, than our predecessors, than, than the people that came ahead of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, uh, earlier on, when we took this topic, I was talking about the fact that the way God intended to raise a next generation is by finding uh, people who they, he can use like the rod that is used to train up uh, a young plant. If you listen to the first part of this section, uh, I was talking about from Proverbs 22 verse 6 and that says, train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he is, when he is old, he will not depart from it. In other words, you have a confidence that once you did the initial uh, part of his life, a part of the life of that, like, like a, I was comparing it to uh, a young plant, that once you train up a young plant uh, with a rod, you don't need to continually direct it. You can, you can actually predict uh, how that young plant will go and the direction it will go. Even when you are sleeping in your house, you are confident that once you have put the plant on the plank, it will follow that plank uh, up until its uh, total height and its entire life. All right, so we know that we, know we compared the young plant that is shooting up to a a brand new child and we're saying that children actually are born into a world without any particular direction they take the traits they take the form they take the image of whoever they see to coil around which by design of god is the father and the mother so you see that we also compared looked at it in terms of the biology we said uh, that in every every trait you see in a child he picked it from someone he didn't particularly have something that is outside what already existed so we now dovetailed that message to be talking about the fact that god began the entire human race with the same concept of replication the bible says that in the image of god created he them all right so god created man in his own image and in his own likeness so we're going to take it up today to say uh, uh, in this topic of couple templates for the next generation to, to, to further and emphasize and entrench the concept and the wisdom that it is by the concept of template and prototype that God designed man to be produced. In other words, what I'm saying is that in producing man, what God planned in producing man is by the concept of imaging and the use of a template and prototyping. All right, so we're going to just further uh, dovetail into script, that, that knowledge into the scriptures and root it properly into the word of God. And then we can now begin to apply it so that we can get a burden to pray. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will grant us illumination in the name of Jesus. Okay, so we started reading from Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 uh or, or we we ended reading uh, genesis chapter 1 verse 27 uh on the first section of this discussion and in verse 27 verse 26 he says then god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth 
upon the earth. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, in the creation of man, what we see here, uh, uh, very straight up, when God was going to make the plants, he spoke. Now, none of us, when God was going to make the animals, he spoke. When God was going to make the land, he spoke. When God was going to make the fish of the sea and the wild beast and every other thing, galaxies, the stars, the moon, he spoke. When God, when God was going to make any of these things I've mentioned above now, God didn't require a prototype. God didn't require a template. In other words, none of these things required a template. But as far as man was concerned, you know, what I'm saying that none of this is required a template, what, notice what I'm saying very clearly. What I am trying to tell you is that there was nothing that needed to be in existence to create plants. There was nothing that was needed to be in existence to be used as a raw material to create day and night, light for the day and night. There was nothing that needed, God didn't need to take from something to make the, the fish. God didn't need to use anything. God didn't need any component in the making of the sea. God didn't need any component in the making of the land. God didn't need any component in the making of the moon, the earth, everything. God didn't need any component to make all the wild beasts and all the fish and everything. There was nothing God was using as a template to make any of those things. But when it came to man, one of the major things that we are looking here today is that when it came to the creation of man, God did not just say, let there be man. First and foremost here, yeah, you will notice that it is only in the creation of man that there was a meeting. A meeting was organized to decide on the creation. All right. So God made a proposal to God to say, let us make man. Now, in the creation of animals, plants, see, there was, there, was, there was no particular reference to such a discussion. All right? But when it came to the creation of man, God said, let us, let us make man in our image. In other words, we are going to use something that is already in existence to create man. Whereas for the plants, the fish, the land, the sea, the wild animals, nothing like them needed to have been in existence before them. Please note this, that the major crux, the crux of the concept we are trying to push this, 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 this evening is that nothing like any one of those other things, nothing like them needed to have been in existence before them. God didn't need a tree or a tree-like component to make trees. God didn't need something to be in existence like fish to make fish. But when it came, because that was not the concept by which God was going to be making any of those other things. They didn't need to have been in existence. In other words, he could call them from nothing to something. But when it came to the issue of creating a man, he, did, he said, look, we, let, we don't just want to create man. That's not how we want man to be created. We don't, you see that, you need to understand that because that's the principle that runs through up till today. God said in, 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 uh, in, in, in inference that we don't just want to create man so that man just exists like from nothing to something. That was not it. That was not going to be the pattern. That was not going to be pattern. That is not going to be the pattern. 
that has never gone, gone been the pattern all right so we are looking at how these things all started in the creation in the production of man don't forget that what we are looking at is parenting the next generation here in the production of man the mind of god was that something needed to be in existence to use as a template to create man so he said when it comes to producing man let us have an image oh my god he said there must be an image to use in a production of man so according to the manufacturer which is god himself and the manual that we have to read which he has given us we can see that in the production of man is a a, a a template a prototype an image was needed from the very first man to the very last man an image was needed that's what he says oh that was how god started creating producing men but not today now don't forget that when this principle we are looking at runs from the old right down to the new when god was going to recreate man now that was the first man when god wanted to recreate a new man in christ jesus now that was why you wonder i'm so excited about this because it's it runs up to today god is still saying for us to produce a new man we need a template now that was why jesus didn't just stay in heaven and just uh, just 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 speak and say let the man be redeemed and let man be revived and let man be restored all right jesus had to come down to demonstrate a template now listen the, the, the difference between the first template and the second template is because the first template came directly from source now it came it came from our beginning we were just born out of the template now but this second template we had been born before the template was brought oh my god so now if you are going to if you are going to if you are going to be recreated by this new template you will now have to follow it you will now have to put yourself give yourself to it to to be recreated in that template which is christ which is christ which is the word of god and i want us to just understand this thing again uh, by a, a simple technology notice that uh, the closest to this uh, is, is, is the, like a photocopy machine, which, which produces documents by image. All right. So if I have a document, for example, I have, I have this document, for example, and I want to uh, create a, a type of this document. Now, I put this document, I can get a photocopy of this document that is exactly a photocopy of this document without this document. That is, you cannot create, you cannot produce a man without man. You can produce tree without tree. You can speak onto this mountain and it will be moved and cast into the sea you can speak and something will come out of nothing you can speak and a tree will just come out you can do that we are seeing we are seeing miracles miracles happen in that dimension but you cannot speak oh my god and man will be you will be produced now how do you validate this don't forget that when god himself wanted to come to the earth as a man don't forget that God himself needed a human, a human being to come to the earth as man because he laid the principle and he did not want to break it. So God as God had to come to the earth and seek the consent of a man that he made so that he can come on the earth as a man because the concept is you cannot be produce a man without a man now when i say man here i'm talking about a human being in this in this in this regard so we, we see here that even jesus was not going to come out of the seed of adam yet that's by the fact that he was not going to come out of the seed of adam which means that the spermatozoa of a man 
which contains the genes of Adam, which is which has been corrupted, was not going to be involved in the production of God as a man on the earth. God still needed the consent, the consent of the woman who will bear that man. So God didn't just appear on the scene. He didn't just appear like Elijah appeared. He didn't just appear like you know, like Moses appeared on the mountain of transfiguration. He had to come. A, 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 through a man, he needed a man to be a man. You need a man to produce a man. Now, what I'm saying, in other sense, is this you need an image to produce a man, you need a template to produce a man, you need a man in producing a man. There was always that pattern all through the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are comparing this production of man to, let's say, a photocopy machine. Now, don't, don't notice that when you pass this through a photocopy machine, you are making another document in the image of this document. You are trying to create another document, but in the image of this document. So you use the image of this document to create another document uh, with, uh, with, with that image. So by the time you are through, you have two images that look exactly alike. Praise God. Now, so when God was saying in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, that and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. What we are saying is that when God, I want to see if I can get uh, a copy of this, uh, but if I can't, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll still understand that let's assume that we have two of these in our hands, right? So, when God was saying that it was very good, what he was talking about was that the copy, the copy that he made was very good. Now, in analyzing a photocopy, we need to look at what we use in analyzing a photocopy. In analyzing a photocopy document, first and foremost, you cannot create a copy without a source. Man is in its fundamental design structure a copy. All right? I'm going to explain that. There must be something. They start copying things all over man. So when you look at your children, you find out that the, 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 the every trait in those children, just like every trait in your life, is picked, is sourced from somewhere. It, 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 you get it from somewhere. Yeah, you let me let's break this thing down to little things. Now you just see that uh, somebody every time he talks, he just goes, you know. Somebody says, every time he talks, he just you know. Now that that what was not from his birth. He it's an image that he copied that was copied on him from somewhere. There's a source to that image. You know one that notices in, in our children, and because this is about parenting. Uh, anytime I, I see a, a, our children exhibit a character, the first question I'm asking for is, where did you get this? Now, before I ask that question, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is to look at myself and look at what they're doing and look at myself, whether what they are doing is, is actually resident in me. Now, so if it is resident in me, I can understand and say, oh, this, this boy got this from me. The image that is, is projecting from him to me right now is, is an image that the source document of that image is, is found in me. So, because that is how, that's the concept, original concept by which man was designed to be produced. Now, if I look at my life and I don't see what that boy is exhibiting, and look at my wife, I try to check whether the, he does that thing with that boy is exhibiting as any connection to my wife. Now, if I don't see it in me, if I don't see her mother exhibiting, his mother exhibiting this, the next question I'm going to ask is, where did you get this? Amazingly. Sometimes they picked it in school. Sometimes it was the lesson teacher. Sometimes it was it was the class teacher. Sometimes it was the mathematics teacher. Sometimes and many times it came from one of their friends in school. So now they are spending time with these people and this photocopy effect, imaging effect goes right on them. One of the major 
major issues with producing the production of character in a human being. Don't forget that human being comes neutral. is imaging. All right, for every trait that is exhibited by you as a human being, even up till now, there is a source image of it somewhere. There is no character trait you are exhibiting that was not that cannot be traced to a source character somewhere. Something imaged it on you. So that's why you know when we bring these things into practical discussions we now find out that you cannot just be talking when you are talking to a child and talking and talking don't forget that child is not a plant that child is not an animal that child is not a, a non-living thing is not is not the sea is not the land is not the sky is not sun is not moon that child is a human being that child is man all right so when you are talking 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 to a child it is not always as effective until it is supported with an image oh my god oh my god i'm praying that god will give us light i'm praying that god will give us light then i started looking at how the photocopier works the photocopier works with light and you see that's why i was excited when we were looking at the the the, 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 the descriptions of the son of god all right the, when i was looking at the descriptions of of jesus in, in our lives so you find that what someone is asking but i've been teaching this child i've been talking to this child as long as you are talking and they, and and what you are saying is contrary to the image that the child is confronted with more closely and more regularly it is difficult to make a child to conform to a teaching that he cannot see an image whereas even without a teaching some many times an image can be reproduced even without understanding the concept that drive that image in other words you can just see that a child is just respectful that child has not gone to any bible study on respect he has not gone to any but you 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 try to look for the source image of it and then you see a mother that is very respectful so you can see that the image of that respectfulness came from somewhere came from the mother and sometimes when a child when our children become very arrogant mothers one of the things you must first understand any trait your children exhibit has a source image somewhere now it's 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 not it's not really ethical right to beat a child for doing what you are doing it's not it's not it's not it's not wisdom it's not correct the child is just going to be looking at you as being unfair you cannot you cannot be beating a child for doing what you are doing because you are you don't understand that that was how the child was made, was designed and structured to get his doings all right so now every character that's why sometimes as parents god is more particular about working on our lives so that by the time we are having children we are going to be producing children who he can say all right the template is good the children can be okay so every character trait negative positive character trait that is resident in our lives if we don't do something about it by the time we are raising children those children don't need effort to get the image copied on them they don't need the effort rather they need effort not to get the image copied on them now so somebody says uh, but that means a child who, whose parents are terrible and so bad the, the father is a womanizer the woman is a very has a very bad and bad mouth and very hungry con uh, uh, angry countenance angry spirit uh, how would you the, the children that means the children have no hope the children actually have hope don't forget that now we have the privilege of god giving us a temp a global template of himself <clears throat> available on the earth 
Now, apart from God, now and I, I said this this way. Let me put this way: when God created the first man, <clears throat> God photocopied the man. Let's put it that way, right? And the man came out in the image of God. And see, God said he was very good. When you are judging the copy of a, 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 a source document that you pass through a photocopy machine, for example, you don't judge that copy by how what the the, 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 the the letterings it contains. No, you judge the copy by its likeness. You can't say no. There's a there's a there's a there's a lexical error in the spelling here. That's for the source document. You cannot be beating a copy for containing what was in the source. You can't you can't be beaten. You can't be you can't be down. You can you can't judge a copy bad by by it containing something that is in the source document. So if it's an, there's an error in the source document, you cannot see it in the copy and you want to kill the copy because it contains that error. No, actually, if you want to con, con if you want to if you want to deal with the error or correct the error on the copy, where you correct the error on the copy is on the source document. You go to the source document, you correct it there, the photocopy, the copy has no issues. You put that same source document into the photocopy machine, it comes out corrected. Alright? So that is what God is saying. That the husband and the wife, the design of God is that they are coupled templates. They are what we're talking about, oneness. They are, they are coupled templates to produce the next generation. And what God is desiring is that by the time these people present a proper template for these children, when they train them up in that template, by the time these children are going to be having to leave them for, for their university education and all that, they can actually sleep and be confident that those children will not depart from it. The only way you can be that confident is when whatever traits that is that is that that is produced in those children is, is produced by imaging imaging but there was another concept here and i would like to talk about it before we close this session the fact that when god produced the first man after he produced the first man he put that man in a garden and he put the tree of life there. And then he put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now don't forget that this, this, this that we're talking about, you can find it in Genesis chapter 2. The Bible says verse 8, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and then he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant inside good for food, tree of life. And then another tree of the of the knowledge of good and evil it says uh, in verse sixteen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now what 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 is bad in eating knowledge? All right. What is bad in eating knowledge? Now, what is bad in eating knowledge is the fact that once you take of that fruit, you are going to subscribe to another source document. You are going to have another source different from the source that was used to make you and to create you in the first place. So once you switch your source image, you die. Amen. Once you switch your source image, as far as this other side is concerned, you can never, 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 even if what you are doing is good, you see, that's why I said knowledge of good. Even what, even if what you are doing is good, it's not bad. Even if you're a very nice guy, you are a philanthropist, you do good things, you are not really doing bad things. Even if what you are doing is good, whether it is good or evil, once you switch your source image, then you died. 
you can never, never, never be the man that God intended, God was producing. Now, what happened? God still gave man the choice to retain, to, to decide which source image is going to be his primary image for replication. God gave man that power of choice. And imagine that when Jesus was also going to come and save and redeem man from that terrible lockup, all right, he's going to redeem man to give man another chance, and I call it another chance, another chance to be reproduced after the image of God. So God came down and demonstrated God. God came down and showed everything that was written. In other words, all the things that we are trying to learn. Don't forget, Adam had no Bible. And yet he didn't sin until he sinned. Adam had no Bible. But he didn't need a Bible. Right? He didn't need a Bible. Because he's, he's, he, 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 he had everything in the source document was replicated in him until he changed the source image. Oh my God, for you to know that the greatest sin of Adam was not just eating the apple, was changing the source image. Because God left that knowledge of evil and evil in the, in the Garden of Eden so that Adam could demonstrate the choice to choose and determine which image he will bear. 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 That was one of the fundamental things that we see about Adam there. He had the choice. And up to today, the last man came as the image of God for us to have the chance and the choice, the chance to come to him and have life and carry the image of the Son of God and carry the image of God in his own image and likeness as we subscribe and surrender and choose Jesus so that his spirit is in us. That's why I say it's no longer I that live it, but God, but Christ that live it in me. So he's the one, Bible says, God, God, God is the one who works in us both to do and to will of his good pleasure. It shows us that it is God first the, 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 the process of recreation and reformation. It's not first about struggling to do right. It's first about being imaged right. It's first about being, being imaged right. So we, we subscribe to the image of Christ. So we bear the image of Christ. Now, don't forget that when Jesus was on the earth, uh, Philip, well, the disciples were asking him, show us the Father. And Jesus said to them, very interesting. He said, how can you be asking for, to, to see the Father? Very fundamental statement he said there. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. There is nothing on the source document of the Father that is not here. Once you see me, you have seen the Father. And it was very, 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 very heavy statement. Very profound statement there that Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You, well, how can you say, show us the Father, when you are seeing me? You are there. I mean, the, everything you want to see in the Father is there. It's like saying, how can you say, show us what, what the document contains when you are looking at the very photocopy of that document? And this is original here. All right? So, and, 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 and these things are now what we use in understanding how to train up our children. I'm going to bring this down. Uh, closely to us and then we'll pray. Even when God was going to replicate what was in Moses, notice that in Numbers chapter 11 verse 16, I'm going to read that uh, a very, very, Numbers chapter 11 verse 16 there. 
I'm going to read it very clearly. Yeah? And the Lord God said unto Moses, Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of congregation, that they may stand there. Then he said, And I will come and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. Now, he, God was going to create seventy kinds of Moses, and God was not just going to talk to them, All right, I commission you, I commission you. No, 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 no. You, it was not designed to happen that way. God was going to do it again by imaging. He took of the spirit that was in Moses and he put it on them. When Elijah was going to carry the spirit on Elijah, even though it was going to be a multiple thing, God was God had it. God was only one that had it, uh, the, the capacity to do that. And Elijah said, Well, if you see me when he's taking me away, he will put it on you. He's not going to create another spirit on you. No, that was not the design. Template product that was not the design god was going to need to take something and put it on, on on them god was going to need to take it from somewhere and put it on them all right so when jehoshaphat was asking can we get a prophet here uh, the king of israel said to him well that there's no prophet here, but there's one guy uh, he poured water on the hands of elijah and the people of jehoshaphat said one um, one song get him for me because the spirit of Elijah will have rested on him. So, if he, if he, if he had Elijah as a source image, then it's, it's most likely that the spirit that created Elijah will have copied on him, will have replicated on him. That talks about, uh, that talk about contact there. That talks about how to you know, contact the spirit of somebody. God was not just going to throw the spirit upon him because that was not just the design. Every trait your child exhibits was taken as a source image somewhere. So sometimes what you need to do to address the issues in the lives of our children is to track where the source, the source image that created that particular character they're exhibiting, find out where that source image is. And let's not overflow this matter. That's why you need to trust God to make sure your image is correct than expecting to have a better copy than the source copy. You cannot really be correct to be expecting to have a better copy, a better copy in terms of accurate, uh, in terms of direction, in terms of uh, 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 way of life. You cannot, you are not authorized to be expecting. You can have, and I'll tell you the only reason why you, way you can have, if that child has another source, another source image somewhere different from you. So you, you just give back to a child and then you notice that the, the same shape of the eye of the child is the same shape of the eye of the father. Why, did he, why didn't God just create every child you know, on his own and make every child a, a, on his own features? I mean, why didn't you, if I remember when my, my, son, my second son was, was being born. I was so excited and the, the major thing I was looking out for when they put that baby in my hands was checking does he resemble me. Because I really wanted a son that really, really, really looked like me. As I know that that was what God really intended from Adam. I mean, because he put the desire in our hearts. I mean, we are just like him. So we are made in his likeness. So, I mean, I just, I was particular about having a, say, a boy just like me, look just like me. So, I mean, I sound just like me. Every day, I, and I was going to be excited in seeing my mirror without, without using a mirror. That was the plan of God for men. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, you, you, will, you will see that one of the things that made Jesus to come to the earth is that he might feel all things. That he might look just like the way God created heaven and earth. He wanted to look at the world and see seven billion of himself. He wanted to look at the earth and see seven billion of himself. I want to ask you, if God should create five million people just like you, how will this world look like? If God should use you as the template to create 10 children, how would those children impact the world? If everybody was to be like you, what kind of world would we have? What kind of template 
are you and i'm talking to somebody here who may not even be born again you're just living your life recklessly and you're you are going to be a whether you whether sometimes it's amazing that he, you know how god releases children to you by the fact that that was that was that was how he had planned life to be those children that are already given to you by god by the time they are going to be coming by the time they are going to be downloaded even i i preached away a message and i said even if you don't like even if you don't want to live right why can't you just consider the children that will come out of you who just have to come out of a template why should children be unfortunate that they were born in your house why should those children find themselves in a situation where the kind of marriage they are going to 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 to, to have image in their in their in their in their in their in their, in their, in their gen, 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 genes spiritual genes it is a terrible marriage why the kind why would children be unfortunate that it's an they, uh, they they will enter the world and become a hungry personality because they were born into an angry photocopy an, an angry source doc. Why would they why would those children be unfortunate that they will naturally have tendencies to be immoral because they were born in your house? If those children were born in some other places, they may not be like that. They may not. They will naturally take the image they see. That was the design. I have been more blessed by people who demonstrated scriptures to me than people who were just talking about it. We have too many people talking about marriage. We have too many people talking about how to live. We have too many people talking about parenting. We are not seeing as much. And yet, it is the imaging, is the imaging, is the imaging concept that God designed that originally there's nothing as easy as you know, as, as as spontaneous as it to create other better other 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 products other creations other reformation other formations of men i pray that as we bow down our heads to pray tonight something will happen to you you will sit tight in your heart and trust god for an encounter and pray that God will reform us. While we have been begging God to reform our children, for daddy, why should your son be like you? Why should he, why, why would his wife in future not be unfortunate that he took to your image? Oh, mommy, why should your daughter, your daughter's husband in the future, why should he be unfortunate that your daughter grew under your image? Why? Why should some of sometimes some of those things are not necessarily uh, uh, attitudes? Some of them are just uh, 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 manners that we could have corrected. Some of them are just simple bad manners that we could have corrected. And it was image on those children. You have children that just do anyhow, do some dirty manners because they got the image from you. We have children that are not that are, that are not sensitive to their to their cleanness to their to their environment being clean because they got it from you. Why should children be unfortunate that they were born to be taking the image of a wrong father or a wrong mother? Rather than correct those children, I challenge parents today. Let's correct the image that is placed in front of this tree. Don't forget Jacob, he created new animals by putting the animals, the, the picture, the, they should, the color they should bear right in front of them by image. He recreated the genotype, the gene structure of animals by creating, by putting it in front of them by the same concept of image. I'm praying that God will not need to arrange another spiritual father, another mother, another person, to the image, to resource the children that were given to you. I, I look at my life today and I thank God that God granted me the opportunity to find another source image. This is not the image of my father. There were many things if I had taken from my parents, I, I would not be like this. But there are some good things I took from them too. And I'm praying that 
I will not have bad things to image on these children because they will need to ex expend, expend more effort to, to break it down and take up another one. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us tonight. Bless us today. Change us forever. If anybody here wants to give your life to Christ, you want to submit yourself to the photocopy of heaven, I pray that this will be the beginning of new things, that even your children will see the change and recopy the change. They will see the change and recopy the change. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.